Happy Monday, folks. Thanks for joining us. Matt and I here. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 4. Hope everyone had a great weekend. They were able to have a time of worship the Lord. And uh, just time of celebrating what he has done for us in and through Jesus. Um, we're going to be, uh, again, in Joshua chapter 4. The clock crossed over, crossing over to the promised land. So, see how this unfolds, and um, some exciting things coming up. There's some, some good things in this chapter as well that we can dig into. So, thank you for joining us, and uh, I think Matt, you're going to kick us off. Okay. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly. And bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. And when your children ask in time to come, what do, these, what do those stones mean to you? And you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Then it passed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded. and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with, carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. So the priests bearing the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished, as the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people, according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people passed over in haste, and when all the people had finished passing over the Ark of the Lord, and the priests passed over before the people, the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over Arm before the people of Israel, as Moses had told them. About 40,000 ready for war passed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they stood in awe of him, just as they stood in awe of Moses all the days of his life. Verse 15, And the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priests bearing the ark of the testimony to come, out, come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, Come up out of the Jordan. And when the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over so that all the peoples on the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, be with us today. Thank you for all your many blessings and guide us as we dig into your word here. Um, help us to keep you first in all we do. It's in your holy precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I think what sticks out to me initially a lot of times when I read the Bible, I, I always try to look for patterns. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the patterns is um, just the progression of the Lord said to Josh, Joshua, and then Joshua said to the people, and then the people of Israel did as God commanded. Um, and I think you probably see that play over a lot of Joshua just in general. But Yeah. yeah. They're, they're following the, the ultimately the Lord's direction right. in there. But you said the progression through the through the different uh, means that he's using, right? In there, 
Yeah, I guess yeah. Joshua's following the Lord, and the, the people are following Joshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, and then obviously this chapter has a lot about memorials in stone, uh, common in Old Testament Israel. Uh, and I think Joshua, in a couple different places, has these stone memorials. Um, and I think verse 7, it says, uh, So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. The way I see it, I, I don't know, Pastor, but that it's a memorial basically to the Lord's power and grace, um, strength, um, and that they then they have two memorials later on with twelve stones that each commemorate basically the, the miracle at the Jordan, right? So, right. Um, so it's to mark a, a significant event, I guess. Um, so, so how do you see that kind of play out in our own lives today? I don't, I, I haven't carried around any stones with me. Set up a, <laughs> a, a stone marker, but what would be like something that maybe uh, you or I would do, or somebody else would do, to kind of remember the faithfulness of the Lord at various times in their life? Um, you know, so is there any like um, memorials or, or reminders or plaques? When I was just looking at you, I was, I was, I glanced up. I'm like, oh, that might be one. Like, yeah, Bible things in your house right? right yeah so so we have a little thing on the wall you can't see it obviously but it, it says it is well with my soul and uh you know it's it's sort of certainly a reminder in the midst of, of hardship or trouble that the lord is with us he's it is well with my soul so that's one way we have like a memorials is different pictures or plaques right in our house mm -hmm. um i know i know another thing that people do sometimes is journal uh, I'm not really a big journaler. I don't know if you are. Do you, do you journal much? Uh, not a ton. Yeah. But once in a while, I have I have written stuff, some stuff down. But I think some people are like really faithful journalers, and they can go back and see, oh, this is how that God provided for me, His provision for me at this stage in my life. And so that's a that's a pretty cool thing too. Um, the other thing, I, the other thing I was thinking of that popped into my mind with these stones and they're setting them up is uh, you, you like you and I like to go hiking, and what do we see sometimes uh, on various junctions of the hiking trail? Pile of stones. Oh, sure. Right? I was thinking, I was like, snakes? No, no, no. <laughs> no, they're not setting up snakes. It's the <laughs> but, but right, style, pile of stones. Yeah, sure. called carns, and those are to mark the way, right? So in one sense, uh, I think that these stones mark the way that the Lord made for them, but also as a reminder of uh, what, what he has done for them in the past. So it's, it's, it's both these things. Mm -hmm. And I guess it could be that for hiking too, like you're showing the way forward, but also if you need to go back, you, need, you can find the way back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a marker. It's a, and so it is kind of a marker too, but it's a memorial mm -hmm. a, a, as well. So yeah, they set up, this, they set up stones. <laughs> Especially if you're hiking above tree line, um, in various places they set up these rock piles, mm -hmm. and you can look and say, "Oh, that's where I have to go next. That's where I have to go next." Uh, if you're going in there, um, so this is kind of a neat thing. So, what else do you have to get out of this? I think for me, the stone memorials can be a little confusing, but if you can relate it. Verse six, and I know, to me, like when I read, I always look for patterns. And the verse six and twenty-one basically say the same thing, right? Yeah. It's when your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you, right? That's verse six. Mm -hmm. and verse twenty-one is when your children ask your fathers, what do these stones mean? Um, so it's all when your children ask um, in the time to come to ask your fathers. So I think the thought a little bit there is teaching. So obviously that's important, right? And, and what are, what's the purpose of these things? What you know? How can we remember God's power and, and right. love? And, and I think that, that is important. You just said like it's a con we need these constant reminders. It might seem repetition, mm -hmm. rep repetitious, but it is it's this constant reminder in our life. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was kind of funny to me <laughs> was verse ten, for the priest bearing the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people. So the people had crossed over, 
and the guys with the ark are still standing in the middle of the Jordan, but it's dry. You know, it's, it's dried up so that they could cross, that everybody could cross over. So you're talking about hundreds of thousands of people crossed over. Have you ever kind of uh, gone out of a well Beaver Stadium when there's a hundred thousand people there? Yeah. It takes a little while to exit, right? You're gonna kind of like wandering down through the crowds and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, moving through. So even though the crossing was pr probably pretty wide, you could go, but 600,000 people or so, it's gonna, it takes a while. It says they crossed in haste, but then after they get over there, <laughs> Joshua's giving instructions to the people, and the, the guys are standing there in the ark in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it says, after he finished, uh, after he finished telling them everything the Lord commanded, um, according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua, then they come up out of the Jordan. And then the, the Jordan returns to its... Uh, the normal flow, uh, which was actually overflowing. It's, it was the spring flooding that was occurring. So it was kind of interesting, but it almost sounds like, like an almost a humorous picture to me. It's like uh, the guys have to keep on standing there. Like Joshua was going on and about Moses and uh, everything that was commanded to him mm. and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> so there. <laughs> what else do you have in here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think just the main theme, right? Israel safely enters the promised land, Joshua's exalted, um, and then I think just the verse that ends 24, uh, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever, um, kind of just sums up, I think, the, the chapter yeah. of um, the act, and then also um, the aim of the miracle, I think, a lot of times could be like evangelism, to show the mighty work of God, and yeah. what that's, that's what I was going to say, because it's all the people of the earth. You know, in other words, they hear this, and they're like, wow. And especially like the ones that are nearby, you see that as Joshua unfolds. It's like there's the fear of the Lord is on them. Mm. And it's like, hey, this is the same God that dried up the Jordan River and everybody crossed over on, on dry ground. Right. So there's an evangelistic thrust, and some people uh, of those places that are going to be conquered, there are some that turn to the Lord. There is an evangelistic uh, thing, so I, yeah, I agree with that on, on those. Um, the Lord is mighty, and uh, yeah, that is the great theme coming out of the whole thing. So God provides for them, and they go through as they go through uh, and cross over into the promised land. And um, the, the, you know, as we unpack this Joshua and then into Judges, you're going to see the hand of the Lord with them, and and how many times uh, they. Kind of fall back or you know backtrack but as you say in the south that's a backslidden christian <laughs> so backsliding so there's a lot of backsliding that occurs in in uh, these coming uh days but god is faithful through all of this and he's faithful in our lives and uh, wants us to be in relationship with him he desires to have us back so there's time of confession, you know, daily confession is, I think, a good thing, uh, to confess before God and to receive the promise of his grace and forgiveness, because uh, all of us will tend to backslide from time to time, right? And we need grace and forgiveness in life. Did you have anything else in here? Uh, I think that's most of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. There's some good patterns and stuff like that you brought out, and uh, there's repetition in there and, and catechesis. So, Lord, if you could close us in prayer. Sure. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this story today. Thank you for um, your promise and the miracles that you do. Help us to continue to have open eyes to see them and open hearts. Help us to share um, what you are doing in our lives and others' lives um, so that others may know you. Um, and help us to find ways to make memorials uh, for what you have done. We ask all these things in your holy person's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.